how tender that is. For this tasty recipe, you'll need 500 grams of chopped butternut, about 250 grams of rinsed and drained chickpeas, 250 grams of tinned crushed tomatoes, a helping tablespoon of natural peanut butter, and about 300 grams of chopped up kale. For the spices, you'll need one teaspoon of turmeric, of cayenne pepper, fresh curry leaves, black pepper, thyme, cumin seeds, Cape Malay curry seasoning, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of mother-in-law spice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of paprika, and one teaspoon of salt to taste. Now first you want to put in your onions and put that in with your cumin seeds to temper them and your curry leaves so that you can really bring out the flavor in the beginning and tempering your seeds um, and your spices in general helps to bring out the flavor really well and ensure that the dish has a very balanced and um, layered flavor. So in there is just my onions and my cumin seeds and my curry leaves um, that I'm going to first start sauteing for about five minutes. Um, as you can see there's water in there and that's because my onions were actually frozen. I had to cut them up and put them in the freezer before I went home since I had too many onions. Um, so yeah, I had to thaw them and now I'm trying to get out um, as much of the water as possible. But just in general, using oil is not necessarily necessary. You don't have to use oil to fry, um, but if you do, then then don't use thawed um, onions and the oil won't jump in your face. So yeah, I'm doing that with water. Um, I think I'm actually gonna just keep my meal oil free since I'm adding natural peanut butter and peanut butter is where I can get my fats from. I don't need the oil and just in general you don't need oil. Um, so yeah. As you can see majority of the water from the onions um, has been evaporated so I'm going to be adding in my teaspoon of garlic as well and the rest of my spices. And what I put in there just now is my turmeric, my black pepper and white pepper, my paprika and my cinnamon. I haven't yet put in the curry spices, those I'll put in just now. Oh, sounds divine. At this point you can add oil. I could add oil if I wanted to, but like I said, I think I'm going to keep this oil free since I'm using that baby over there. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna keep it oil free and now I'm gonna add in the rest of my spices and I'll button it. One tin of tomatoes. This is a tomato and herbs one. You can just use the normal one. It just has basil oregano and I think it adds a little bit of flavor. But um, yeah, you can just use the normal tomato without any additional additives. <laughs>
And while you wait, of course, you can help yourself to some smooth black cherry flavored cultured soya, which is what I'm going to be having because um, I'm hungry. <laughs> and this is going to take another 20 minutes. So, yeah, I'm going to eat this now. All right, bye. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's frozen. So this... <laughs> is, you know, not ideal when you're hungry because I'm impatient and this takes long. But, you know, it hits the spot. Freeze your yogurt, guys. Frozen yogurt for the win. have some kale that as you can see was going yellow a bit because it was in the fridge for too long so I'm just going to use that up which is another great tip that you can use when you're making curries because the flavor is so much and um, it goes well with a lot of vegetables if you have any vegetables that are wilting in the fridge like your greens you can add them in that'll not only add some nutritional benefits to your meal but it'll also um, help to use up any vegetables that otherwise might just go to the dustbin or your compost um, so yeah, I'm just gonna add that in as well I'm just letting that go in the great thing about kale is you can eat it raw so I don't add it in the beginning I add it towards the end of the cooking process so that it can wilt and this can still maintain its nutritional benefits Now that we've come to the end of our cooking, I'm now going to season it with salt. I prefer to do this at the end because I realize that when I season it with salt in the beginning, eventually the salt kind of evaporates and I find myself adding more salt than I otherwise would if I just seasoned at the end. So I'm just going to season it with salt. This is up to you how much salt you use. I'm going to serve this now. It's about ready and in there. I made some brown rice, two cups of brown rice, and as you know, I added <laughs> some frozen peas just to add some nutritional benefits and some protein to my rice. And yeah, I'm gonna be dishing this up together. Go tender, that is. Of course, how can we forget about our lovely rice water? This meal comes with a free cup of rice water <laughs> um, from the brown rice. I just recently found out that you could actually make rice water from brown rice. I didn't know that before, so yay. Mm -hmm.